How are you everybody? Now I don't know if you've noticed, but I had this pen, this copper pen, sitting right here. It was gathering dust and it was really kind of uh, oxidized. So I've cleaned it today and I decided to use it because I've actually never used it. And what a strange pen. And this is a poilon à sucre, a sugar pen, fully made of copper, used exclusively for confectionery. So anything that has to do with sugar. So to celebrate this first attempt using this pen, we're going to try to make what's called in France the praline, which is usually like an almond or an hazelnut that is coated in sugar and then caramelized. Huh? They're known in France as chouchou. That's the basic, but we're going to go further and try to recreate the Lyon style pink praline, huh? as you can see on the picture there. Now, I'm not sure how we're going to go, but at least we're going to be using this pen. And also we're going to look at the history Oh, let's do things here. Let's go. Now, how exactly was the praline first invented? So the story goes that a pastry chef or someone working in confectionery, making candies and stuff, was cooking his sugar, where suddenly, by accident, a walnut or two fell into his sugar. It was like, oh, coated in sugar, tasted like a candy. Oh, I think I've invented something. You know, and that's the legend, but there's no details. <laughs> How a walnut just arrived by accident, especially like in a kind of a bake environment. So there's no cupboard, so it didn't fall from the cupboard. I thought the guy was outdoor, you know, maybe cooking under a walnut tree or something, a bit odd, but it can happen. But then the walnut's got a shell. So that's debunk. So I think what happened is that when you cook sugar, it is kind of lengthy. Maybe the guy was lazy, you know. He was just like one of these comey cook, you know, cooking your sugar and doozing off, you know. Just like, and the, the chef must have been on the side, you know, or walnut. So if he falls asleep again, it's like, Alphonse, you know, for him a walnut, and it went like that. And maybe, you know, fell into the finger. So he was like, oh, what was, what was that? Oh, chef, I think I invented something. Could have been something like this, but again, we're not sure. But that's just the praline. What about the pink praline? The pink praline is a bit more, uh, there's a bit more of a story. So the story goes that this was already there. Okay, the praline was already invented. So no more accident. You can't do that again. And apparently another pastry chef was suddenly inspired by the beautiful colors of the rose along the Rhone Valley called the Roseray du Rhone because there's a lot of rose when the vineyards are there for the bees. And he decided to put some red color, pink color into the praline to make them more look like rose. So it's a bit more romantic, but no one really knows what was the original version, but that's for the history. Now let's do the recipe. Let's go. So for the pink praline, like the standard praline, you're going to need either, uh, you can use hazelnut if you want, almonds, I'm using almonds like this, but you can also use peanuts uh, if you want, and you got a choice. You're going to need sugar, water, and then this is red coloring, food coloring. Now you can find it in powder, but this is the liquid form. And you're just going to need a really tiny drops of it. Of course, I'm going to be using here that special copper pan because it's the best when you work with sugar, but you can use a normal saucepan. It's not a problem. I'm not going to make lots of it, only 50 grams of almond, just so that we can see the process. So when you make praline, the standard one, the sugar, that means without the coloring or the pink, uh, the pink one from, uh, from Lyon style with the coloring, the process is kind of the same. First, you got your dry fruit. You, know, you need to put them in the oven and for a bit, for a torrefaction, a bit like coffee, to develop the nutty aromas. So that's the first step. Then you're going to make a syrup with sugar and water, and we're going to add some coloring into it. So you're going to have a kind of a reddish syrup. We're going to mix the fruits in and coat everything, and it's going to stick to it, and you're going to have a first coating of sugar on your fruits. The real recipe uses at least three coatings of sugar. That means you, know, you have to rinse and repeat. You know, you do it once, you clean your pan, you redo it again, you're redoing it. And this is the confectionery way. It's a bit laborious. So we're going to do like one or two coatings, just see how we go. But now let's start with the torrefaction. For the torrefaction, about 190 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes. It doesn't matter how much of your dry fruit you have. Silicone mat is something you need later on. So strongly advise you can use just parchment paper if you want. So all what we're going to do is put this like this in the oven for 10 minutes. And now the almonds are in the oven. Let's look at the tools of the trays. I'm going to use the sugar pan here made of copper. You can use a standard saucepan, sugar, and you have to measure it. I've got 100 grams here and 50 ml of water. Usually when you make a syrup, the amount of water is roughly about one third of the, the weight of the, of the sugar. So I should be using 30 ml of water for 100 grams of sugar. But when you do this, it's like when you know what you're doing because things can go fast, okay? When you begin, 
it's nice to add a bit more of water. Like this is going to be really liquid when you start. And then you have more time for the whole syrup to slowly reach that 124 degrees temperature. Like if you don't have to panic or whatever, you know, even if you're not too careful, you can still get it pretty easily. This, the little brush for the sides and to avoid all the splatters, uh, don't caramelize and ruin your, your syrup. And the food thermometer, this is going to be paramount here to know the temperature. For me, I'm using this as well because this is going to get extremely hot. And that's to hold your thing, okay? Don't burn yourself away from that. That's it, let's go. Okay, well that's exciting. Let's do this. I'm going to start with all of the sugar in there. And the water. And I'm going to bring this to a high heat. We may need to use something like this, like a heat proof spatula later on, okay? But for now, you don't need to mix everything too much. The best is to leave your pan uh, and start the bubbling start. Now, this is started. We need to add some of the red coloring, but I never use it, so I'm gonna add a tiny, weeny bit. Now, usually, it is just a few drop or a drop of it, so I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go be very careful. We can add more on how second, second go, okay? So this is like, a few drops and this is really hot see that's the reason i've got that pan so we're gonna oh you see oh, that is really <laughs> that is really red well i'm so glad i didn't put more than that okay so i know one drop way way enough so i'm gonna start to get this thing out here thermometer and we're gonna start to measure slowly the temperature of uh, that syrup here Okay, so sorry, but I can't show you there on the camera. 100, 109, almost there. So this is really efficient. Wow, copper, geez. All right, so I'm just below the 124, but I'm gonna now stop. So we turn the heat off, and now we put the almonds. Almonds are going in. And of the heat, I'm gonna try to mix that in. And coat everything in here. You know what, I think, I could have put a bit more, but there's a nice, see that color? A nice coloring going on. And you need to kind of uh, keep on coating until it cools down, solidifies a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna keep on going. And you see it starts to be more firm. I'm take it totally off the heat and we're gonna keep on working it on the side. Now look at this, by the time I move the pan, ah, look at this, we've got a pink sugar. It's happening. It's happening, people. Whoa. So immediately when you've got this, okay, got a nice coloring, we need to put this back onto the silicon mat. Let's go. Now this is insanely fast. I didn't even have time to put the camera on and it was starting to attach to the pan. So look at this color. It's quite amazing. It's quite bluffing. So you see, so what we're trying to do here is to coat, you see the almonds, to get these kinds of coating. You see how they start to be coated like that? And that's gonna be the pink pralines. So what we need to do here, you need to make sure you detach the almonds, and put them on one side, and then we're gonna reuse that sugar. You're not gonna throw it away afterwards, okay? So because we're gonna do a second batch. Now, for the second coating, remember 100 grams of sugar, but you have to reuse these ones, the pink sugar you have already. So I've divided, I had 50 grams of the pink sugar. I'm putting 50 grams of the normal sugar. I'm going to put the same amount of water and first start the syrup here, the clean one. Then we're going to add the pink residue that we've got here. Okay, so precisely, almost the same process, a little bit more complicated. Okay, so let's bring it to the boil. Now we still need to add some of the coloring here. So a tiny, weeny, weeny bit. I think I'm gonna add in this one. Okay. Because I already have some coloring. But same exact thing. Okay. We're gonna have to leave this and let it become a syrup. But because now it's liquid, this is the dodgy thing I'm gonna do. Now this is gonna be more tricky, I think, is try to melt this, the pink stuff, with my water. But it should be fine, it should be fine because we've got the same amount of water. Let it melt slowly and let it go into a syrup, that's it. Now, good news, after adding the little pink syrup, I thought there was gonna be hard clumps everywhere, but because it is just sugar, it has melted into the rest. And now it's just one coherent mass. So same thing, I'm gonna to go to 124 with my foot thermometer. Okay, heat off, 
got the temperature, same thing here. But this time, I'm gonna make sure I transfer this before it solidifies. Okay, so I'm gonna go straight next to the bench and pour it on the silicone mat. Now, second coating, I've kind of thrown the syrup on here a bit too early and I think you see you got these very thick clumps of almonds stuck together. I think I should have mixed them well. So and this is one of the trick. When you mix the almonds in the syrup, the distribution of the, you know, of the syrup and how it solidifies is really happening with you churning the whole thing really regularly and not leave it to sit like this. So I'm going to do a third go, putting this back into the syrup, but not on the camera and see how we go because the real way is three times. Let's do it three times. All right. So for our third time, I've actually poured some syrup over in a, in a bowl like this. And I did this to kind of try to evenly coat all the stuff here. But this is as far I'm going to stop. You can go further. There's one last step where we need to put them a little bit in the oven and maybe to remove the edge of that whiteness on there and we're going to be done. Now the last step is optional. Uh, the shops are saying you need to put this at 70 degrees Celsius for at least 30 minutes in the oven. I'm not too sure what's going to happen, but I'm going to start. And if it takes too long, we're just going to wrap up the video. That's it. And here we are. So final result. Lots of things to talk about very quickly. First off, what we've done here. The coating is really good. After 30 minutes in the oven, it's almost like a coffee bean has been torrefied. So this is the inside. It's an almond. Uh, it's nutty, it's sugary, coated perfectly with the pink sugar. This is a specialty from Lyon. What can you do with these things? Eat them. A lot of them, they're beautiful, just on their own. But if you've got too many of them, you can crush them and use them into a brioche, into a tart, even into meringues. There's plenty of recipe you can do with these things. The copper pan. Brilliant. This uh, the first time I use it. Uh, invest into a sugar pan like this. They're not actually expensive at all. It's from Moviel. And it was so fast to uh, have the, the sugar to come to temperature and it was super precise. Absolutely loved it. It works a treat. Now for the rest, before I go for the technique, I found that mixing the almonds in the pan like this is good for the first coating. After the first, the second coating, sorry, I would say make the syrup and just pour it over the almonds and use a stainless steel bowl and rock it around like that, swirl it around to coat evenly with the sugar. Otherwise you get too many clumps. So that's my little tip to finish that sweet video for this week. I'll see you next week for another episode on the French Cooking Academy. Take care all, bye bye.